So when you're photographing a place, what I'd like people to think about is, think about featuring that place. What are the most important aspects of it? Um, things about the vibe and the feeling. And in one of the talks that we'll have a little bit later on this evening, uh, any accessibility features, and that might include whether it's flat going through the entrance or the entrance looks wide enough for a wheelchair user, um, whether the toilets are accessible. Um, I personally don't usually take pictures of the toilets unless they do have a particular accessibility feature in them or they have something like a baby change table. Uh, if it's you're just going too, to, it's too risky and you can get yourself. Yeah. If you're going to do it, <laughs> people look weird at you. Make sure there's no one else in there. I think somebody just collapsed upstairs at my house. I guess the only <laughs> exception would be like if you're in like a homeware store and there's a whole bunch of toilets on the on display, that would be like fine, but weird, but still fine. Interesting side fact, I work for a water utility and we have a school display where they bring school groups through. It's not unusual for a five or a six year old to jump on one of the display toilets and use it in front of everybody else. <laughs> no. And for that reason, the display toilets are actually flushable. Um, if you go to IKEA, they have a lot of display toilets and if you they, they sticky tape the, the, the lid lids down. Closed. Yep. The lid's closed. Or sometimes if the lid's open, there's like a perspex thing, so you'll feel it. And it's like, do not, this is not a real toilet or something like that. <laughs> yep. Uh, the other thing I'd encourage when you're photographing places is quality over the quantity. So stick your hand up if you've been to a place on maps and you've seen 500 images that are almost the same from the one person. I think pretty much all of us have seen those. Uh, interestingly, uh, if you're in Android or iPhone, you can now report that profile if you find someone doing that. You can report their entire profile. You don't need to report the images one at a time anymore. So please feel free to do that. You're doing everyone a favor by cleaning up maps. The other thing I'd strongly encourage is only recent photos. So if you've been to the place within the last couple of months, that's probably fine. But earlier than that, I probably wouldn't do it because the, the idea of maps is the representation of what the place is like now, not what it used to be like. And try and show off the place, not you or your friends. Now, the only exception to that is if you need to show the, the vibe of the place in a way that's suitable for groups and you've got a group there, that would be okay to have a group photo, but I wouldn't go putting a lot of them in there. I can't say don't do it because I've done it. You know, I would say like the one one sort of exception to that is if like like for especially for restaurants, if you're you know take a photo of the entrance, then a photo of the food, and then photo of your party with food sitting at the table, I feel like that's that's acceptable. Yeah, that kind of thing's okay. Um, the other yeah. place that might be good is at a, a bar, showing how exciting the place is, or possibly a dance venue. Then it's okay to have people in them. I think. Yeah, but one thing I I like I, I see one guy who takes like a selfie of himself in front of a cafe or like in front of a pharmacy. Like that's that's like, nah, nah. Yep, yep. Maps is about the place, not about the person who's visiting it. And well, look, there was one of so one one guy went to a bank, and it was just a picture of him standing outside the bank. Like and it, he it, it, like it, it wasn't relevant. Like it wasn't he wasn't even using the ATM. But he was just standing out the front of a bank. Did he have boring. a screen mask on? <laughs> <laughs> maybe he was um, holding a note you know but i feel like some of those ones might be from like people who take the photo and then like you know they go to google maps and like they ask him oh do you want to add this photo to the map and they just go yes i feel, yeah, I feel like i'm that sure that might, does happen yeah i don't feel i feel like they weren't deliberately added i feel like they were just like recommended into being added hey who's noticed in the app that it um doesn't ask you to add the photos more than once now. So if the photo is already on maps, it doesn't suggest it. I've, I've seen that. Yeah, that's good. That's a new feature. It doesn't seem to be out for everybody. Um, interestingly, I'm in two different maps programs and in the public one, it's there. And in the other one, it's not, which is a bit weird, but that's okay. What do you mean you're, what do you mean you're in two maps programs? Just two maps programs, Max. We'll just leave it there. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, remember your photo rules or the suggestions? and try and make sure the shots are cool and good. Now, I do encourage people to be careful because contributing to maps is not really about points. I know you get them and I know they're fun. We all want them. 
I'm on a level 10. I want points. But um, it's not about all those points. Now, product-wise, it's good to highlight what a business sells or the features of a place and try and make the stuff look interesting. Max has found something else to show us. And for products, think the same way you do with food. So you, you make food look attractive. You make food look like something that people want to eat. Do the same things when you're in a store with their products. What do you want to show us, Max? Quick count, I just, quick, quick counterpoint. You were saying it's not all about the points. A quick counterpoint, it is all about the points. <laughs> all I do is I want to get them sweet, sweet points. A million points. I just want all the points. Weirdly enough, um, once you actually get to level 10 where points don't matter anymore, I've actually discovered that I accumulate points faster than I ever did. <laughs> it's just one of those weird things. So what I'm going to do now... But my favourite one is one day, I one day they added a whole bunch of extra point reasons, like for longer reviews or for um, a different... Sometimes or like they just add different points. Sometimes they give you extra points for when they change those rules. So that's always great when you get extra points for that reason. Yeah. Now, I just have to stop the presentation for while I'm doing what I'm doing next because I'm actually going to take you out into maps and hopefully awesome. this will work. So <laughs> at a small place, and I'm suggesting like a, a food shop or a railway station, um, I like to add a photo of the entrance if Street View is out of date. If Street View is current, I don't usually bother. Um, one inside photo showing the vibe and feeling of the place and a photo of each food item you order. You can tell I started this as a burger shop because it says one burger photo. Well done. <laughs> one burger photo. <laughs> so hopefully it'll let me go to the so, link. Now, is it showing, can you guys see maps now? Yes, we can. Yay, it works. It took me ages to figure out how to link to a particular place. And you can link to one of your own reviews, but you can't link to your own timeline, which is a bit weird. So this is a, a small... It's very hard. It's very hard. Yeah. This is a small place. Um, you'll notice I didn't get my first image particularly straight. I'm a bit sad about that. The first one I'm going yeah, to show you, but it's not straight. You know Google Photos, you can, it does that, has that auto-rotate feature? Is it doesn't work after you've put it on maps, though. You've got to do it before. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Um, I did put up an image of the outside of this place because Street View didn't have one at all. And it, 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 I have to say it's not a very inviting-looking cafe it really looks industrial if i presume it's in an industrial park yeah it is but inside it, it's quite nice and they have really nice bun meal pork rolls and for those that um don't go in for pork they also have chicken and lamb and a bunch so, of I, so you've noticed i just want to put you can see actually the amount of times the photo's been viewed on your review yep you certainly can just up here um, and one thing I've always wanted, I would love to be able to, for not just me, but for other people to be able to see the amount of times it's been viewed. That would be a, like a much a feature that I would really like. Um, I think you actually used to be able to do that, but they took it away. I'm, I'm not that surprised because it, it causes um, competition amongst people for something that they can't actually control. Uh, yeah, but I just, it just makes me, it just makes it like, it's kind of like Instagram likes or like Facebook likes. It just makes, it shows how, I just want, well, I guess for me, because I'm trying to sell, get shopping centers or other retailers to, to, you know, use my services. It just, it, 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 it's not, uh, for me to have to get a screenshot of every, every image, it just takes a lot of work. But if they can see it already, it's just, it makes it a lot easier for me. Yeah, I think GMB has been talking about doing some increased reporting for views for businesses. But, uh, I haven't seen anything materialise from that yet. So the next one is a medium-sized place where I sort of suggest that you do, again, an entrance, one or two inside photos that give you the vibe or the feeling of the place, and one or two showing products. More's okay if their range of products is diverse. So this place that I chose, oops, this one, it's called Pet Stock. And they have a lot of different kind of pet foods and different kinds of pet supplies. So I was comfortable putting seven photos up here. But it's interesting that the dog leashes have 4,700 views. That's just kind of weird, but that's okay. Um, 12,000 views on pet bowls. How does that happen? <laughs> yeah. I'm bowled away. Yep. And only 400 on pet toys. So people obviously care about pet bowls and don't care anything about pet toys. <laughs> but 
So these sorts of places, I look for vibrant, colourful things and try and show off what's there. If they've got a particular sale or something like that on, I might highlight those things so that people can see them. The only downside of that is they might see it there and go back and go back there later. So you gotta be a little bit careful about that. But Maps is pretty good about not keeping old images in focus of people usually. So going onto a large place like a department or a hardware store, I'm sure we've all been to them. Again, the entrance. Now the entrance to these places are often inside shopping centers, so they probably don't have street view at all. Inside shopping centers, if you love views, is an awesome way to get them because there is no street view photo. So if you go and put up a 360, or if you go and put up just an entrance photo, you'd be surprised what happens. And I tend to put up three to five inside photos. And if it's big enough, I'd sort of suggest up to 20 showing the product range. So I've, naturally enough, I've prepared an example. These are places that I've just been to um, in the last couple of weeks. So this one's a Kmart. Interestingly, I haven't written, written a review for this one yet. Must do that. Uh, so I, I've just put up some of their wares. I've tried to keep in mind to keep the photos looking interesting. So finding interesting shapes, interesting colors, interesting pandas. <laughs> now, I'd have to say pandas aren't popular because, you know, only 45 views. Fry pans have got 1,400 views. I feel like it's not relevant. So, like people searching for a Kmart aren't searching for a, pe a panda pillow. I don't know. They're cute. <laughs> Various um, questions. There's a question in the have? chat. And there's a question in the chat that I'm just going to read out for you, which is Thank at you. Paul. My question is: When you post a photo on Maps Review, do you edit or do you just post as you as you go? Do edited photos give more views or not edited photos? I don't think it makes any difference. So I I try and get the photo as as right as I'm going to for a place when I take it. Uh, if you need to edit it to improve the light or improve the color a bit, something like that, or maybe fix the not straight one that I put up there before, that would probably be a good <laughs> thing for me to do. Uh, then yeah, you can certainly can edit them before you upload them. If you do I, edit it, one thing to be gonna, careful was, of though. I was going to say, is, I was going to say, so I, I, you know, because we don't we don't get paid to upload photos, we don't get paid for these photos, but you know, often I just go into Google Photos and I go to the auto setting, so it just automatically makes uses a recommendation to make it usually a bit more brighter and colorful and then i just save that and then i upload that one i just use auto edit yep one thing i would be careful of the new feature that helps with uh preventing you from uploading duplicates unintentionally will see the original photo and the edited photo as different photos and it might prompt you to upload both so just be careful of that and mm. Andy, you, you know where well the answer to that question yes i have <laughs> I'm pretty sure you were there. <laughs> Ananda, can you tell us that story? You have to unmute, Ananda. No, I uh, can't remember the one with Paul, but uh, um, shopping Melbourne mall. Central. Sorry? Melbourne Central? Sorry? Melbourne Central. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Some of the shops are very, very um, controlling on how their brand is represented, and this was a a shop that was selling um, towels and things like that. And the, the, the colors in their shelves and the way they had everything rolled and stacked just looked nice. So I took a picture of it and they weren't very happy that I took a picture of it. Yeah, but we get we get things like in the burbs, we get things like uh, Knox City, uh, which is, is a very large uh, dispersed mall. And uh, the, the security guards uh, get hassle people because their kids playing and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, now, before you head in there, if you're going into a mall in particular, um, get online, go to their website and check what their photography policy is, because I can just about guarantee you they've got one. So if you know what their photography policy is before the security guard fronts up to you and you can say, I'm sorry, mate, but this is allowed. Here, look on my phone. This is your website. It says I can do this. Then uh, you, you're fine. Now, some of them do actually say you can't take photos. And in those places, I do recommend as a local guide that you don't. But if you do want to do it, using your phone is a lot less conspicuous than using a, a normal camera. It will attract a lot or less. Or a 360 people. camera. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, the, I, I, so what we, uh, Paul and I were on a photo walk and we went to a restaurant and they asked us not to take photos. And I was like, man, you're missing out. We're on a photo walk. 
yeah, it's worth trying to explain to them, but you know, some places don't want to do it. And there's a, a place in Melbourne, it's a juice bar. Um, they absolutely hate it when you take their picture. So I sort of take that as a personal challenge, <laughs> but not at a local guide's capacity. <laughs> um, so public places, same deal, entrance. Now parking can be good for a public place if it's a, a thing like a park, because that can be important for people who have got young kids and they want to know, is there somewhere I can get out of my car safely? Are the spots big enough to get a pram out? Um, if the person needs has, has accessibility needs, they want to know if there's enough room to get their chair out or whatever other machines they need to use. In these places, I tend to suggest one photo for each major feature, and that might be a playground or some barbecues, tables, drinking fountains. Um, I particularly highlight a drinking fountain if it's got a way to fill up a water bottle, so filling up your bottle, or if it's got a way to fill up a dog bowl or it's got a built-in dog bowl, they're pretty handy. And one for each activity area in the place, so things like sports grounds. So this one is Mornington Park, which is relatively near to where I live. You can probably tell where I live, it's where the fox is. Um, just got someone else coming in. We, we've got some different things there, the entrance. We've got some picnic tables. There's quite a lot of them in this park. Layout of the park, that there's some barbecues and things like that. An adventure playground, which at the time was covered in safety tape because of COVID. It's open again now. The kids are allowed to play again. Boo, COVID, boo, city virus. <laughs> uh, I'm sure we'll all have it sooner or later and then it'll be fine. <laughs> and if it's an enormous place, now this is something like a, a national park, a theme park, a museum, then I think plenty of photos is okay for a place like this i think it's actually quite okay to go a bit crazy at a really big place because they have so many features to show off and at the bigger places like if you look at something like disneyland they're getting in the vicinity of ten thousand photos a day posted to google maps if you have a look at the counts if you want your photos to be seen you're gonna have to put up a lot <laughs> there's no way around that <laughs> so in in this sort of place and concentrate on important things like accessibility features in the place and, and entertainment. So on this one is the Royal Victorian, Gar Royal Victorian Botanic Gardens in Melbourne. We did our um, first post-COVID photo walk there just last week, which was kind of cool. And I've put up quite a few shots of the place showing the plants. I'm sorry I missed it. It looked like a lot of fun. It was so near your house too, Max. Yeah, next time. <laughs> So in, in these places, in normally I wouldn't suggest going in this close to stuff, but in the botanic gardens, it's okay because people are actually there to look at the plants. It's the only reason you go to the botanic gardens, apart from the fact it's just a nice place to have a picnic. So concentrating on plants and the ponds and things like that, perfectly okay in this sort of place because it really gives people the idea of what the vibe is like. Um, it also gives photographers an idea of what they can go there and look at and what they can see. which would be all kind of cool. 